What's up everybody? It's your boy Bean here for breakfast. I look a little too dark, I'm sorry. For breakfast, I um, had, I guess for brunch, I had um, chicken chili and that was good. I'm just hanging out today. I drank a lot of coffee. Um, this is the coffee press right here. I can't get it out of frame. Okay, um, I'm just hanging out today. I woke up at 4.50 a.m. this morning. I walked three miles on the treadmill um, and I burned uh, considerably more calories than the last time I walked three miles. So, um, you know, sometimes that happens and I'm not sure why. Um, I came upstairs, I took a shower, um, and then I went to the tailor to get my jeans picked up. Uh, if I grab my jeans here, I can show you what's changed. Um, so here on my pretty obvious phone fade, um, there was quite a bit of damage here um, just from heavy usage. Um, my phone is in here a lot and it just, because the jeans are quite tight, it results in just um, heavy wear. So. Um, I asked him to put a patch here, and, you know, um, it's previously, um, it used to just be a few obvious threads that would, um, be, um, holding this together, but now it looks, um, just faded instead of a little broken. There was also an invisible patch. Uh, there was also an invisible hole here, um... Yeah, it was here. Um, you could sort of tuck your finger in between the pieces of fabric here, um, and that was the hole. But um, and you couldn't really see it when I was wearing it. But the fact that it was near the crotch, which is one of the less good places to have a hole, um, kind of bothered me. And the fact that there was a hole in my pants in the first place also bothered me. Um, I want to show you guys the inside of this pant leg. So you can see the patch. Here it is. Um, it's got, it's made out of denim, which I think is cool. I'm sure the guy has lots of denim patches for fixing denim. Um, but yeah, I just think it's cool how there's a patch here. Um, something fun about the inside of my denim is you can pretty obviously see the outline of my phone on the uh, pocketing, pocketing, which I think is interesting. Um, yeah. So I got my jeans back and like, yeah. The first time I was ever at the tailor, he had his cats just walking around. And um, I'm pretty allergic to cats, not to the point where I'd ever need to use an EpiPen around one. I've slept in houses that have cats in them and I just wake up and I have terrible allergies. But it's more like, um, you know, when it's spring and you have bad allergies because of the pollen, uh, it's similar in allergies like an allergy effects to that. Um, yeah, I really like how my hair looks right now. Um, when my hair is long, I have to do, um, I have to participate in exceptional work to get it to look the way I want it to. Uh, but the shorter my hair is, the less I have to work to make it look passable um, for my sort of criteria, right? Um, and right now it looks pretty passable and I really like how it looks um, considering the amount of effort I put into it. Um, I didn't work too hard on my hair this morning and so um, the ratio from work put into my hair to, you know, my AirPods are just sitting here. One sec. Um, so the amount of effort, the ratio of the amount of effort I put into my hair to how my hair looks is pretty optimal, um, and so I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, so um, I came back from the tailor, I drank a bunch of coffee, um, and yeah, 
I don't know, that's pretty much it. I played some ter Terraria, um, I watched some YouTube. Oh, I ate some chicken chili with my, um, with my uh, coffee. Then I also ate some pretzels, which were in this uh, quart bag. And now they are no longer in this quart bag because I ate them. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I kind of got bored of Terraria. Um, I'm still locking in. I, I, th there would be nothing worse than to quit playing Terraria. Uh, but um, it's in a rather irritating, I, I'm at a rather irritating uh, level of progress in the game. Because it's, it's uh, I, I've defeated the Eye of Cthulhu quite a few times. I just defeated the King's Line today. Um, but um, I need to do some rather tedious work to get a um, arena working for the Brain of Cthulhu. Because I have an arena, but it's too small to do anything useful in. I've tried defeating the Brain of Cthulhu a couple times, um, but I'm playing on Master Mode, and those eyes that it spits at you are very, um, are a pretty big barrier to defeating the, the boss. So, you know, I'm uh, trying to get better items. When does the meteor land? Is it a hard mode thing? One sec. It's over. Um, it looks like the Brain of Cthulhu has to have been defeated for a meteor to land. Uh, so it is pre-hard mode, but it's post-Brain of Cthulhu. And I'm having trouble defeating the Brain of Cthulhu. I was thinking, man, if a meteorite lands, if I just wait, if I just mine and I just wait for a meteorite to land, I can get um, armor from the meteorite to, um, to defeat the Brain of Cthulhu easier. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So anyways, yeah, I kind of got bored of Terraria, and um, I uh, started working on this little, this little art piece that I'm working on, which is a secret. Only a select few can be aware of its contents, because it will not be... I'm speaking in riddles, I'm sorry guys. Um, the, like the, the, like the collection of um, only a select few can know what the contents of this art piece are because it will not have a connection to Leo the P.O. or other names that I make my thumbnails under. Um, because sometimes, you know, I, I, I tend to make my best thumbnails um, when I am being supervised by friends of mine. They sort of um, are like I'm like a little, <laughs> I'm like a little rat in a cage when I'm making my thumbnails. I'm sort of just doing things. And when other people are witnessing me make my thumbnails, they are able to like direct me in certain directions um, that, um, you know, allow me to make like good art, right? Um, and so I, f um, in a scenario where someone is making me uh, walk, like, make my thumbnails, a pretty common, um, comment I get, uh, is like, oh, you should, like, just do art, you should do art as, like, a, you know, separated from the making of thumbnails for, um, your YouTube videos, right? Um, that's a pretty common comment that I get, right? They're like, oh, you should just make art on, like, Instagram or something, you should make an Instagram account. And I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about doing it, um, and this art piece will be probably the first um, public image I make with the intention of making art. Uh, however, I feel a little dirty 
um, associating it with Leo the P.O. or um, any of the other names I've made my thumbnails under. And you guys will not be aware of it. You watching this won't be aware of it or where it is or how to find it. Because um, I consider Leo the P.O. I hate to call it an art project because, you know, what it, what is art, right? What, what even is that, you know? Um, but, you know, Leo the P.O. is sort of a separate thing and it's like a sort of, like, multimedia sort of project um, that, you know, not only shows um, my physical aging, um, but also, you know, my history, um, and also my, uh, improvements in, like, creating, uh, like, static visual media. Um, and I consider it, I, it's, it's sort of very containerized, and it's sort of in a vacuum. Um, you know, For a while, my thumbnails were my primary uh, output, what were my primary medium of self-expression through art. Um, but recently, in this past year or so, um, whenever I felt the need to do self-expression through art uh, on something that isn't superficial, um, I tend to just make it in GIMP and just leave it on my computer, right? Um, and, you know, that sort of action reminds me of, uh, like, in the video game by, I think his name is Davey Reedon, uh, The Beginner's Guide. Um, one of the characters is named Coda, and he makes these video games, and he doesn't release them to anyone. And the fact that he does this is a pretty big sticking point in, you know, the narrative of the video game, right? Um, and the, I think the video game implies that th there's nothing wrong with Coda for doing this. Like there's, there's validity in making art just for yourself. Um, and, you know, spoilers for the beginner's guide, but you know, the, the narrator who is Davy Reedon, um, well, sort of a, like a, alternate universe Davy Reedon, voiced by himself, um, ends up being the sort of antagonist of this story in the game. Um, and it, it's, it's been shown that uh, Davy was... Is his name Davy Reedon? That's such a stupid name. That's crazy. Oh my god, yeah. I for oh my god, that's crazy. I forgot about that. Um, Davy Reedon's brother is Doug Doug on YouTube. <laughs> okay, sorry for calling that a stupid name. It's just that Davy's, you know, it's a unique name. And it would be embarrassing if his name wasn't Davy, and I was just if and if the name Davy was just this um this thing I had made up in my mind because that's an embarrassing name to make up. Um, you know, if you make up a name, make up John or something. Davy is insane. <sighs> um. Doug Doug went to Berkeley? That's crazy. Anyway, um, so I, um, you know, what was I talking about? So the whole point is Davey, um, 
you know, is the antagonist, and either metaphorically or literally, um, that's sort of debated, I feel like, um, is modifying these works made by Coda to, um, Davy is modifying these works by Coda, um, either literally or figuratively, metaphorically, whatever. Those are those mean two different things, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, to show them to the audience and, and give a more consistent story, right? Um, and so Davy is shown as an antagonist for modifying Coda's works to show them to the public. And Coda is shown as righteous for not really sharing his art with anyone, right? Um, and I feel like, you know, when I first played The Beginner's Guide, I was a big fan of the Stanley Parable. I was very young. Um, you could probably do the math. I'm 18 now. So I uh, heard that Davy Readon uh, made the beginner's guide, and I was like, oh, I better buy this game now because I love Davy Reedon's work, I'm gonna play it. Um, and I played it one day, I think after school, maybe. Um, and, you know, uh, because I had a, you know, some sort of media literacy, I was able to tell that Davy Reedon was the antagonist, and at the time I had been like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Davy Reedon's a bad guy. Um, and Coda's totally in the right here because that was the implication from the game and, you know, I, um, maybe I don't have media literacy because I'm, I'm framing this in a way that, uh, implies that I was dumb for, anyway, okay, so I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so in the, so when I played this game when I was very young, I was, I totally bought into the narrative, uh, presented by the game that Davy Reedon is like an evil, evil guy, and that Coda is um, awesome and cool, and that Davy was like cringe, right? Um, but, you know, as I have gotten older and I've formed my own opinions, um, and also I'm 18, so I, you know, I feel like it's a cultural concept that, uh, 18 year olds and like people in like their early 20s think they know everything about the world and that they're very intelligent. And um, I don't know, I like to think of myself as very intelligent, but the fact that that's a cultural concept um, sort of, you know, mm, you know, shows me that I'm probably wrong in that assumption. So, you know, my opinions could change on this, but as of now, this is my opinion, but also maybe disregard me because young people assume they are very smart and know everything. And uh, I assume I'm like a smart guy. Um, so maybe disregard me uh, because maybe I'm not that self-aware. Um, and you know, while I am self-aware enough to recognize that as a cultural concept, I am not self-aware enough to uh, recognize that I shouldn't be recording this and talking about this publicly, right? Um, but, um, so, you know, as I've gotten older and I form my own opinions and I've become fans of other artists, um, I enjoy a lot of um, work by somebody named Greg Guevara, um, who is also known as JREG on YouTube.com. Um, and, you know, JREG, aside from making his own art, he also sort of make he's also sort of like a, like a meta artist, as in he makes a lot of art about art. Um, whether it be on his second uh, self-titled channel, or um, whether it be on Horseshoe Theory. Um, I believe in Toronto, or one of the big Canadian cities, he has a, um, a, uh, I thought that was a door squeak, but it is just a screaming child. Um, yeah, so, uh, JREG has a um, sort of artist collective in Toronto. He has a studio um, where artists hang out and they make art. Um, and I think a lot of them are video content creators. Uh, but I just get that implication, judging by who is on their Horseshoe Theory podcast. Um, but this could entirely just not be the case. Um, so don't quote me on that. But, you know, he brings a lot of artists to his studio, and they all work on art, and he talks about the importance of, you know, 
this is a little unrelated of community, you know, uh, among artists. Um, but also, he talks a lot about the importance of um, sharing your art uh, with other people, not only in your circle, but uh, sharing your art publicly, right? And how a lot of artists um, make art and they don't share it publicly out of some sort of um, uh, like vibe, you know, they, they, they hit his, you know, Greg's theory is that people uh, like artists hide this desire to share their art publicly deep inside them and they have this cope where they're, they're only making art for themselves and, um, you know, um, and he doesn't think that makes sense. And I thought about it a little bit and I feel like that doesn't make sense either. Right. Um, and so, um, I feel like my, my desire to have no connection, uh, between the Leo the P.O. project or any of the names I've made my thumbnails under. If you're a true Leo the P.O. head, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that, um, which I don't think anybody said true Leo the P.O. head because none of you, none of you know what I mean by that. Not a single person watching this video knows what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm talking about. Uh, because I only make art for me, right? But, um, you know, anyway, um, you know, I feel like my aversion to uh, connecting this, you know, theoretical other art project, um, possibly on Instagram, um, to Leo the P.O. or any of the uh, names that I've made my thumbnails under, um, uh, is part of this cope that Greg talks about. Um, of artists not wanting to share what they work on because they're just making art for themselves, which, it, you know, just doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense as a thing to do. Um, you know, I feel like art isn't really art unless it is witnessed by humans. Um, you know, despite how much I might want that not to be the case, right? Uh, but, so I feel like, you know, my aversion toward connecting this to Leo, I'm just repeating myself, my aversion toward connecting this to Leo the P.O., my aversion to connecting this to Leo the P.O., um, stems from this cope, but also maybe I am justified in my, uh, aversion. Um, what am I even talking about? Yeah, I also have school today, um, so... Yeah, today's the first day of physical school. I'm gonna leave at 3 p.m. It's 2 p.m. right now. It's because I have class at six and it takes me an hour and a half to get to school because I have to go downtown and then I have to go even up further north. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be leaving at maybe nine, probably a bit earlier because it's the first day of class and we're not gonna be in class too long, I would assume. Um, but yeah, you know, um, not too much else is really going on. I'm gonna be leaving at three, it's 2 p.m. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. It's sort of sunny outside, but it's also sort of overcast. There are definitely clouds all over the sky to the point where you could describe it as overcast, but it's like the clouds are at like 50% or 25% opacity, and you can see the sky right through the clouds, but the clouds are just creating a sort of transparent, like, white, um, brightness layer over the sky. Um, but you can definitely still see the sky, but every time you look up at the sky, you are looking at clouds, but you're just looking at the sky through the clouds. And so because of that, the sky is a little brighter and, like, wider than normal, because you're looking at the sky through the clouds. I hope everybody has a wonderful day, and... Um, yeah, see you, dude.